Hi, you guys, and welcome to my, I've been corrected, podcast. I suppose I do do this a more podcast style. Um, I am the Happy Crafty Homemaker, Carrie Penny, and today is finally a show and tell video for what I've been making for the last couple weeks. Uh, it's been a while. The only thing I've been able to get up in the last, I think, four weeks is a Knit Crate unboxing and a Darn Good Yarn unboxing. So, finally, I have time to sit down and film very quickly. Um, unfortunately, I, you know, I waited all month of October to film with my adorable teacup. Boo, y'all! And today's Halloween. So it's the last day I could have filmed with it. It's the first day I felt well. I've had time and I haven't had somebody here that needed help with anything. Today is Tazo Spicy Ginger Tea. Um, if you are one of my five followers on Instagram, you know that uh, I've been trying to stave off of cold. I thought I had gotten to where I wasn't going to catch it, but yesterday evening around dinner time, I started getting the uh, nose burning, and today I'm starting to get the throat burning, and my husband was out with it for about three days, and then still after a week is not 100% back to normal, so <sighs> lots of tea, lots of ginger, lots of zinc, and hopefully I will rebound very quickly. Um... I did forget to shut the door downstairs so the cats are liable to come and hit the stand that this is up on. So once again, I try not to edit my videos unless I have to, you know, show a picture or cut to different things. So we're going to plow right along here. Um, the I think I'm going to start with acquisitions because it's the smallest thing for my show and tell. And I want to share this bag. How adorable are the beavers? <laughs> Everybody has been making fun of me because I am so thrilled with this bag. I love this fabric. Um, I even got the little accessory pouch to go with it. I just love this fabric. And I love the little naked beaver with his little axe. I don't know. Something about that beaver in particular just keeps cracking me up and it's killing me. But they're all... This fabric is so charming. Um, I got these from Bags by Awesome Granny. Do, do, do. The inside is lined with flannel. I actually like this so much I got one of her Halloween bags, but unfortunately that one is under a pile of stuff. So this is the only one I could get. Um, I love the size of this bag. Um, hello, Curzon. <laughs> you see my Halloween cat making his little appearance here. Um, I've been working on a shawl that I kept in here while I was working on it. So, I mean, it, it holds a fairly sizable amount of yarn. Um, I think I could have easily put like two Karen cakes in here maybe. Um, one of these days I'll learn to pre-write down things like bag dimensions and sizes and things like that. But until I have my life together, we're gonna roll with it. Um, I do have some Karen cakes here, though. These are going to become a fall blanket. They're very orange, but very pretty. I love this color. I, for some reason this year, I've been really into that brick red terracotta. See, that's reading very orange. But it's not quite that orange. It's more brick sunset red. So yeah, I mean, two Karen cakes and you've got plenty of room in here. Um, I know a lot of we, a lot of us know what Karen cake size is, so highly recommend this bag. I've now carried it around for an entire project. It, it's been 
shopping with me. It's been to my godson's, uh, not to the baptism, but to the get together afterwards. Um, yeah, it, it is just very comfortable to carry. I, I would carry the smaller, the one size down as a purse and particularly if the wristband has the flannel lining on it because that really is very comfortable on your wrist when you're carrying it around. Love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. So since I've already got a whip or a, well, it's a finished project. I just need to do the last set of ends here. Um, This is a shawl. It is made out of Hobium Kartopu Baby Pastel. I used three balls or two and half of a third one. And the color on this is D2838. Uh, this is a very super pleasant acrylic to work with. Um... I need to do a whole dedicated video at some point about knitting with acrylic and what I've discovered. Um, it, it's an acrylic polyamide blend, so that's probably why it's so pleasant to knit with. But um, it's got great drape, actually, especially for an acrylic. Um, you can't really... Well, maybe you can. Uh, but I've been calling this my 80 shawl. I did a uh, I-cord bind off at the top. We, um, it's worked from the bottom up, which I, I don't know why I enjoy that way so much, I guess, cause I can use as much yarn as I need. Um, yeah, really enjoyed it. Um, it's the first of the, I did get some Hobium yarns in an order back when they sent out all the PR packages that, um, Holly over at the Perfect Pineapple, Happy Pineapple, Crafty Pineapple. Holly, who makes the absolutely stunning dolls uh, with the channel about pineapples. Uh, she got one. Margaret Olander got one. Um, Ross, Smell Great Guy, he got one. But he had been working with him before, is my understanding. Um, there's somebody else I was watching got a package from Hobium. Um... I've only seen Ross really come back and having worked with more than one. Margaret's done an entire tutorial using the just wool. Um, so I, I was wanting to know, you know, what <laughs> is it what everybody says it is? Um, that's part of why this channel started. And maybe I'll get more into that later in this video or do a dedicated video at some point. But... I did get this to try out. Um, I can't remember the price per ball. I can, uh, I'll list it below. But uh, I do have to say it was very pleasant to knit with. This would be beautiful to crochet with. And it has great drape. And with a little steam blocking, that would be even more impressive. Um, you can see it's got great stitch definition. Even if my lighting is a little... I need a way to slightly diffuse my table lamp when I'm filming in here. Um, my light bulbs from my overhead are, are gone up there, so like I'm getting blasted directly here. It's almost like I'm trying to film outside, and I just blinded myself by looking at that light. Um, but it's okay. It's all right. Um, yeah, so Hobium, definitely, I would give them a shot. Everything I bought, I have touched, I haven't worked with, and everything feels super soft and very pretty. The cake yarns that look a lot like the Karen Cakes feel a lot like them. I will let you know my next project is actually going to be either a corner-to-corner -corner shawl using... Um, the Hobium Cakes. Sorry, Pippin is over here trying to get into my finished projects basket. Um, but I will let y'all know what I think of the cake yarn and if it is the same thing as the Karen. Um, 
I got a whole bunch of new clothes for winter and uh, I was trying them on so now I'm like covered in fuzzies and lints. But yeah, so first one, Baby Pastel, definitely a Pippin. Sorry about that, y'all. He just got into the box of hats over there and was clawing at the box for some reason. Weirdo. But yeah, Baby Pastel definitely would recommend. So if you're looking at buying something from them and you want to know specifically what's good, this one has my seal of approval. I love this color. I have two more sets of three to work with, so I'm looking forward to working with those. I think I'm going to take this leftover, and I'd like to find a Fair Isle pattern. Um, I've only got, didn't I write it down on here? Yeah, 70 yards left. I'm trying to be more organized, you guys. Um, so I have approximately 70 yards left in this ball. Um, so I need to find something that I can, I want to do something stranded with it. I think that would be fun, like a little stranded feral hat. Black with this, I think it really set it off. And I just love the colors in this. So enough yammering on about that project. Um, you already saw my darn good yarn box. Um, opening, which included the things that I made from that. So I don't want to spend too much time on my darn good yarn box, but, uh, needles were definitely a no. I still haven't put those in the things to take to the personal ministry. Um, I made a doily that was completed. A neck warmer, which actually with this, I mean, I still say this looks like jelly beans. I made four Bethlehem stars. And one pineapple. I think I'm going to stiffen this and try to put this on the Christmas tree. Um, last year I did one that was uh, blue and silver and it had a lot of that color blue. So I might try to stiffen that and uh, put that on the tree. But those were all completed since my last video. Um, oh, I should have... Mm, when I'm done with finished objects, I'm going to have to pause the video and come back. I uh, had another thing I wanted to talk about in this video. But um, some of y'all might re remember back when I uh, placed my order with Mary Max and I got a mystery box and it included two balls of cotton, kitchen cotton. Um, this is, uh, I don't even know who to give credit to. Um, my grandmother used to make these, but I refound how to do them because of Margaret Olander's video, but they are pot holders that are double thickness. You, um, work a series of chains and make an oval and just keep going until when you lay it out you have a side you can seam. I tried two different seaming methods. Uh, ooh, might help if I put the seam set up. I definitely don't like that one. But this one I think turned out really nice. I still don't like working with kitchen cotton. I find it very drying. This wasn't too pokey. This was um, the twist from peaches maybe no not peaches it's got to be sugar um regardless i did get these done um they i i started with a ch base chain of 46 on both of these um they're very i mean they'll get a lot of use they're super durable they'll as far as the the well they're not they'll hold up they'll be great i wanted larger trivets though um we do enough entertaining to where I really like having really big hot pads, really big trivets. They'll be fine for getting things out of the oven still. Um, but I have silicone glovey things from Ikea that are great for my little hands. Um, I, until I found those at Ikea, I actually did not own any type of pot holder for grabbing stuff. I use trivets for putting hot things down, but I've always used a kitchen towel since I was an adult and on my own. 
I think it's, I burned too many cheap ones and was afraid to keep them in the house. Because, well, what if that had been my hand in there? Um, but these I trust. I just haven't ever bothered to make any. So I used the two balls of cotton for that. Um, I will put my Ravelry project page for these down below. Um, just because it tells you how many chains I did. And, um, the, the yarn this was for a kitchen cotton. This was pretty fun to work with. Uh, very similar to the Bernat twist style handy crafter. So I did like that. And these are done ready to be gifted or used. Um, that set me off on a cotton kick just to push through getting my stuff done. I actually, I think for the beginning of 2019, one of my goals is going to be working through most of my kitchen cotton and maybe trying some different kitchen cottons to see if I can find one I do like. Um, something more like the nitpicks dishy kind of stuff and see if those feel any different than what you normally think of as kitchen cottons or uh, dishcloth cotton. But I did make a small market bag. I thought this would be good to take to our Main Street Market, um, buy some veggies and fruits and things like that. The occasional bottle of wine has come home with us. Um, super basic. I, it's supposed to be two colors. The bag turned out a lot smaller than I thought it was going to be. Um, but wasn't, I mean, this was a, this is from a cone. It's from Pisca, but I can't remember. It's, it's not peaches. It's something else. I think, uh, it's very, very old. I mean, it's the cone of this cotton is probably nine years old and has been sitting in my stash. I made two market bags when I first learned how to knit and I bought this at the same time. I barely finished the other cone to do the two market bags I did then. Um, but I started another pot holder. It's more of a nine by 13 style pot holder, uh, much larger place matty size. <coughs> Um, but that's like my bedtime brain project. Um, last night I finished working on a custom order I had. So I picked up some Christmas colors because we have our annual Christmas party coming up. And started another one. You can see what I mean where you, you work in an oval until it folds over and makes a square. So I'm working all the way around in a big continuous spiral and to know when you're done you just fold down the sides and when these meet to where you can sew them together that's where you just whip stitch them together um this is Bernat Handicrafter Holidays and I found it on clearance for six dollars the color let's see it's like holly and ivy Yuletide. Completely wrong. Yuletide twist. So I found that on sale for six bucks over at Joann's. Uh, I was there picking up some buttons. So, um, on to my custom order. So one of my husband's colleagues asked me if I could make this hat. And I still haven't put the buttons on it yet. So imagine the side buttoned up like this with a brim. But um, the name of this is on the pattern. Women's Peaked Hat Crochet. It's a free pattern by Yarnspirations. I, uh, I have to say, this crown is brilliantly done. The design for the way the increasing is done on this is absolutely brilliant. Um, it does not list an individual designer on the pattern, but whoever you are, wherever you are, this is genius. 
I loved doing this. I'm actually going to make one in a beanie style for myself in a magenta purple color. Um, but yeah, uh, the lady who bought, who ordered these, she wants some white, just plain four buttons, just like the picture had. And it's got this beautiful, see, that's the advantage to the weird blowout light is I can at least show you the texture on things and particularly a black hat. Um, brilliant. I love it. I hope, you know, I told her, you know, it's one of those, it sticks off the back of your head a bit. Um, she wanted it just for covering up bad hair days at work, but, um, I love this. I will be making one for myself as soon as I get a chance. Um, definitely a pattern worth trying if you were looking for interesting hat patterns, but that's not all. She also asked for this one, which is the slanting stitches hat by Lisa Schroyer. And it's a pattern from Interweave Press. Those are the two ways she shows wearing it. Um, when you go to Ravelry and look at the other projects for it, there are some amazing hats out there. But without putting it on my head, I can't really show you how awesome this hat is. It's worked from the bottom up. The big V's give you this amazing... And then you can flip the brim up. You can style it more of a down... It's, I, I just, I'm, I'm thrilled. Um, I don't think the lady who ordered these realized you, you can um, actually peek this down a little bit more of a fedora style. I, I don't think she realized how structural these hats were going to be when she placed the order for them. These are not your standard, whoo -hoo, not your standard crochet hats. Love these two patterns. They were awesome. And then the final one she ordered was from Stitch Nation by Debbie Stoller. The Charleston Cloche designed by Kim Guzman. And A, how adorable is that? I need to come back through and defuzz everything. But you see that star cluster there. The whole thing is done in 12 rows. It's very, very quick. Um, I have my preferred ways of putting on the details like this. When you fold, do, do a fold-up brim, you can see where I've got a pleating here. But very sweet, easy little flower. This would be an amazing gift. This is a more traditional fit hat, though. Um, you can pull the side band down, you know, as far as you want it to go and stuff and still style it like the other two hats, but you can just poof on your head. I am so excited to see what she thinks about these because if she doesn't like them and doesn't want to pay for them, I will be more than happy to keep them. These are some of the few hats where I was floored as I was working on them at how interesting these are. <sighs> So I need to, <laughs> these go in their own uh, bag over here. I found a perfect bag from Joann's to carry everything for her project in. One cat short of crazy. I'm the crazy cat lady, y'all. Well, one cat shy of it. Um, to my last, I guess this is my last finished object. Talked about it, talked about it, talked about it, talked about it. Yep. My last finished object is my Cakes to Detango shawl. Wee. This thing is so huge. There's my Pico edge. I did not carry the Picos across the top. I didn't like the way that looked, but I did. When I came back down the last time, I came across to cover all the floats in a single chain one single. Well, I did a single and then I did a single chain one single across the top. And uh, it's definitely a more traditional shawl. I don't think there's any way to wear this as a, 
like Holly at the Perfect Pineapple did her. Yeah, no, this isn't going to work this way. It's, um, I see each ball is about five ounces or something like that. This was 18.7 ounces finished. So I, there was a lot that went into this as far as making it and the yarn that went into it, but it is so soft and so snuggly and just thrilling in every way. So I can snuggle up, enjoy my bright colors, especially since I'm coming down with this stupid cold and just enjoy life snuggled up in my shawl. So I'm very, very excited. So I keep getting notifications that somebody is at my front door or there's motion at my front door. I think it's catching my Halloween lights. Um, yeah, so that is all of my finished objects. I wish for a month's worth of stuff there had been more to report. Unfortunately, I've been sick. My husband's been sick. Now I'm getting sick again. Um, my granddaughter is back in school now, so she's literally catching every, every single cold and passing them on to her brother who's bringing them over here to me. And my husband also works with a bunch of people with little kids. So lots of bugs and cooties already going around. Um, I'm thinking, um, cause they're, there's another whole group of things I wanted to talk about today, but I need to go grab something real quick. So I think now might be a good time to pause. Curzon's asleep over here in the corner. He likes being close. Hi, Curzon. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't want to give you vertigo, but he's being very, very cute. Um, get you set back up. I heard something weird downstairs. Um, I'm going to go downstairs and grab what I needed to grab real quick, and I will be right back. Alrighty guys, so I did forget one finished object group. Um, unfortunately, I only got four of them done, but uh, I did try to make some Halloween cards. These were used, uh, done using, this is a paper pad from DCWV. Um, and the Simon Says Halloween kit, Simon Says stamp. Uh, nothing on the inside. I didn't get them finished. Um, getting up to the craft room has been really hard for me. And like I've said before, I do all my paper crafting upstairs. And, uh, you know, when I don't have a chance to come upstairs to work, it makes it very hard. But I did get four done. Uh, they'll be super cute for next year. I'm really pleased with the way these turned out. This isn't my normal Halloween style. Um... I also used some of the uh, Mrs. Sparkle or whatever it is from Hobby Lobby or uh, Joann's. I used some of their stuff in there. Um, but I thought those were super cute. I totally forgot to share those. So, Carrie's going to have story time. The whole point of this video was, or the whole point to my channel was to share with you good and bad experiences, reviewing products that we see frequently but don't hear people talking about how they really feel about them in the end. Um, so one of the things I wanted to do was a comparison of some of the more popular cake lines out on the market between, um, you know, the Karen cake, the Hobium cake, um, <laughs> There's another one I had on there. Um, sweet rolls, which is something I use a lot of. Um, I wanted to compare those with things like, these are the Hirschner's puff pastry. And, you know, anything with a wool content that's in a cake form like this, I really wanted to 
compare the texture, the quality, um, how, the drape at the final, you know, all of them claim to be worsted weight, but like I can tell you just touching this, this is more like Simply Soft with a little bit of, I don't want to say scratchy wool, but um, more durable wool in it compared to the Karen Cake and Hobium, which is a lot softer. And then Sweet Roll, of course, is 100% acrylic, but it's a very stiff acrylic, but not prickly acrylic like, say, Red Heart, Super Saver. Um, well, I, I placed an order with Hershner specifically to order and only ordered. Sorry, I am sitting on the floor again, so. Oh. Well, I can't get them up that high, but. The, the distance between the camera and me is not enough to be able to get my leg in the air. Um, but I'm wearing skeleton pants in honor of Halloween today. And I just wanted to share my skeletons. I forgot to put my witch necklace on. Um, there's a beautiful designer on Etsy that does painted porcelain jewelry. It's a very folk art witch that I just adore. But come in a little bit for some story time. So I placed an order with Hershner's. And a la my Mary Maxim order, we had a hiccup. Now, the only thing I ordered was a five pack of the Puff Pastry yarn. And this colorway is like rhubarb or something like that. You know, it doesn't even say on the ball band what color it is. And of course, I don't have an order sheet in here. Um, well, that's interesting. Um, so yeah, I think it's like strawberry rhubarb or something like that is what I got. Yeah, there's nothing written on the inside either. I got the five pack because I was, th I wanted to do something larger with it to give it a fair shake to really see what I was working with. And I pulled out this pattern, the black pearl poncho. And I thought, you know, I've crocheted with the Karen Cakes. I've done a lot of crochet with the Sweet Roll. It'd be fair to, of course, once again, stick to the same craft and crochet a poncho. Or crochet with the puff pastry. So I get my order. It takes one and a half to two weeks to get my order. This one bag item. That's fine. Um, Hobie, I'm shipping from overseas and I get that in three days, but you know, whatever I can order from Michael's and have it here in a day or two. I can order from Craftsy and have it here in a day or two to each their own. Once it was shipped, it did take a long time, but it took like five days for it to ship. I ordered on like a Monday. It didn't ship till Friday. It was picked up Friday night. So of course it didn't move again till Monday. And it was like Friday when I got it. My husband was home that day. So it was definitely Friday. It was Friday with the hurricane when we got it. So I opened my five pack package and my yarn looks like this. This is hanging out. You can see it where it's hanging out there. You can see this big tuft of manky twisted up. And there's another spot in here. And I can feel another one or two in here when I'm pressing on the cake that are like that. So I called them and said, hey, look, I got this pack. I got my package today and my yarn is messed up. Now, none of the other cakes have anything like that on the top. But... That's not to say that's not inside of it. I don't know how deep this manufacturing error goes. But this cake is pretty gnarled up. I mean, I'm going to lose. I mean, if you look at how thick and fat this is, I mean, that's a couple yards worth of yarn that's been split apart like that. So I'm going to lose. Like, I really can't use this and keep the striping pattern and the effect in a large garment like that. And since I was planning on making a garment with it, you know, I didn't want to lose that. And I was already going to have to need every single yard of yarn in the cake. So I asked for a replacement cake. And I was like, you know, I was planning on making something, a single big project out of this. Is there any way to match dye lots or, 
you know, ensure that the, the cake you send me, is there any way we can, you know, make sure that this is going to match somehow what I already have since this was purchased as a kit. I mean, these were all together in one package, their manufacturing package, as a single item. And I mean, it was like, the price is $20 for five cakes, and I got a coupon for $50 off one, or 50% off one item, so I used it on this, making all five $10, and then it was like, they were running a, a deal on shipping where the shipping was like $3. So, I mean, I got an excellent deal on this. Like, don't get me wrong, I didn't pay that much per ball. I paid approximately $2 a ball because I waited for my coupons, waited for my sale, and this this was something I wanted to do specifically for my YouTube channel. Well, eight minutes in and I still haven't gotten to like my final. This annoyed me. The lady on the phone literally could not seem to understand why it would be a problem to lose that much yardage out of the middle of a striping cake. So it took forever to get her to understand, A, I needed a replacement, B, I would really like to get something in the same dye lot because I bought this to do a whole project. Well, they don't match dye lots, obviously, and they're not even willing to try to match dye lots. And based on looking on this, there would be no way to match a dye lot. So I don't know what the deal is with that because there is wool involved. There is dye lot involved. Um, there's no, no way around that. Ooh, and there's a big, I don't know if you can see, this might be attached to the other piece. You see how fluffed out and messed up that, I mean, this ball in particular is just absolutely atrocious. Now that is a different color than every single one of these up here. So that's a different spot on there and a different problem than what is on the top. So I get my new ball of yarn. It takes another two weeks. So at this point, I've already waited a month to make the project I had this set aside to make because they don't expedite shipping on their error. I have ordered from I mean, even Joann's, and I mean, no offense to Joann's, but their online order customer service could really use some help. Uh, Michael's, I've, I've, wham, bam, thank you, ma'am, no problem, but Joann's has been something special to work with sometimes. But even they, when they miss an item, they send the wrong item, they have a damaged item, I've never had to, like, spend 40 minutes on the phone explaining what the problem was and trying to get an exact match for what I was doing. Now, I haven't had yarn problems, but I've had other items where it was a match set. And I mean, they've, they've worked with me where like I ordered a group of things, only one of which was broken. And they sent me the single item, which they sell separately. So I mean, I've had some bad issues. I do a lot of online ordering for things from Amazon to crafting to clothes, hence why I was trying on clothes earlier. I do a lot of online ordering and I've never had these kinds of issues before trying to explain, hey, you sent me a damaged item. I need a replacement, but this replacement goes with the set and I need it to match the set. So anyway... I'm not sure where my extra ball is. It's lost to the house now because I went to go put it with these, the, the five that I ordered. It doesn't match. It's the wrong color. The green, this like weird, I don't want to say mustard green color, but it's kind of a taupey green or a tanny green. It's reading very brown on my end. Um, it's like green, green. It's, um, eh, the green fabric's too far down there. Um, it's green, green in the new ball. So it doesn't match at all. So I've got to come up with something completely different now to do with these. I'm annoyed at the poor reception on customer service. I'm annoyed that there's no way to match the balls in their dye lot. Even when you buy a set, you may or may not be getting a matched dye lot set, apparently. So, I've now had two orders back to back from, <laughs> oh yeah, I've got little skeletons in my hair, skeleton hands. 
Um, I've now placed two back-to-back -back orders with the um, mail order yarn companies and I know a lot of people have no issues they do the kits with like Mary Maxim and the stuff I ordered directly from Mary Maxim that was fine like I had no problem with my shipment time my ordering time payment processing anything like that my only actual problem with my Mary Maxim order was the mystery box did not give me a good value um, in this case the product I got was absolute crap and like I said I can feel a couple knots in here. I don't want to like pull everything out, but there are a couple of the spots where I'm pretty sure there are knots in it. And then when I get a replacement, it doesn't match. And I asked specifically about trying to match these colors. And because there's no, you know, now that I realize there's no color on here, the problem might be they sent me the wrong color. I would have no way of knowing that. So I am a little frustrated. I'm very annoyed. And based on this experience, which I think this may be the only time I've ever ordered from Hershner's, I would say save your money. Um, the product I got was damaged. And I can't say whether or not that's indicative of them constantly, but their customer service was obnoxious. They didn't expedite the replacement shipment. So in total, I ended up having to wait over four weeks to get the stuff I ordered not broken. I mean, even Michael's will like, they send it expedite. It's not next day, but I mean, within two business days. Um, Scrapbook.com, the first time I ordered with them, they forgot a 6x6 pad. It was a very large order. And they forgot the 6x6 doodlebug pad that was the Christmas collection last year. And I called them and she's like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. We'll get that right out to you. 24 hours later, I had my little 12 by 12 book. So, or six by six pad. Um, very, very quick turnaround. Hobby Lobby. I, I waited like four days when they forgot an item. So I've never had to wait over two weeks for a domestic company to send me a replacement for a damaged item. Even ordering from the UK... I've had damaged items that got here faster. So on top of the fact that you've got companies like Hobium and even Ice, who I have mixed feelings on Ice, but um, you know, even Ice Yarn, you get your product in a couple of days. So <sighs> Hershner's needs to up their game. Hershner's needs to work on their quality control based on my order and they need to work on their customer service skills. Um, and it could just directly be to, due to the fact, hey, we don't put any information on our yarn balls. So you have no idea of what you got. And now that I realize that, like I said, I need to go find the other one and maybe I can match UPC codes and uh, see if maybe they sent me the wrong colorway. Because that might be, there's another one that's very similar to the one I ordered. And like I said, I think this is strawberry rhubarb. I'm not sure. Um, there's another one that's very similar with the, the berry tones. Could very well have been mistaken for this one. Since there's nothing on the ball band. So... I would say, based on just grabbing this, save your money. Oh, Sugar Wheel's the other one. Love Sugar Wheel. I mean, I really, I love the cake phenomena. I would love to see more blended cakes, like the new um, Shawl in a Ball. And um, I think it's Wollstrom is the, the German company um, that does such beautiful cakes of blended, where it's a gradient from one color to the other. It's not a... Um, hard striping pattern. Um, yeah, so that is Carrie's story time. I tried to do something for my channel and kind of got um, wackadoozled. So not very happy with that. I'm very, very frustrated and exceptionally disappointed that that was the outcome of that. Um, I will try to do something with it. Um, Based on the shaping of the shawl, maybe I can do it a little bit thin, or not the shawl, the poncho. 
I might be able to do it a little bit shorter, thinner from top from what would be shoulder to waist. Um, but I tend to like things very oversized. I like big and fluffy and concealing. I like to hide my clothes. Um, you know, something like this that's black and neutral, I will wear a more fitted sleeve, but I normally, I mean, this is a big flouncy trapeze shape skirt, uh, top. I mean, I've literally got it like when you're a kid sitting in crisscross applesauce and you bring your shirt around your knees as a kid. That's literally how I'm sitting because this is such a flouncy rounded shirt. So, um, I prefer something that is more concealing and more covering. Um, I, I'd rather cover my flaws with lots of color and exciting over things versus having you see where I put on so much weight. <laughs> um, I am working on that. I do exercise, but uh, I've had a couple of setbacks with uh, weight loss. So trying to figure out a form of eating that doesn't uh, hate me is, is a lot of fun. Right now I can eat olives and alcohol. Uh, pickles. I don't know what to do with pickles. Uh, <laughs> um, very hard to find foods that like me back. So I'm working on it. Um, uh, I told you about my beaver bag. We went through my beaver bag. I call them my lumber sexual beavers, just for the record. Um, because they're sexier than any guy dressed up trying to look lumber sexual. I'm not a, I'm not a pro of the, uh, fake hipster look. Um, not the flannel and glasses, but the, like, I'm trying to look a certain way hipster look. That I don't like. Um, you should never look like you're trying to look the way you do, in my opinion. Talked about all my finished objects. Talked about how much I love the, the increasing for the peak tat. So I'm working on, I've got, no, I'm not obsessive about note taking at all. I am the post-it queen and I love it. So I'm working on my goals for 2019 and I'm running, I, I'm running out of time this year on my yarn goal. Um, remember it was uh, 25 pounds was the goal between um, September 1st to the end of the year. And I was being very, very aggressive. I mean, that essentially gave me four months to go through 25 pounds of yarn. I will say I'm at 158 ounces right now, um, and I do have a couple of mid-sized projects that I'm working on, but um, I don't think there's any way I'm getting to 400 ounces unless I just like crank out a ton of blankets somehow, um, double-stranded, big, bulky, chunky blankets. I don't see there being any way I can hit 400 ounces at this point, but that was a four-month goal. Um, if I maybe said I want to do 40 pounds in 2019, I think that's a little bit more accessible. Or if I said I want to do 50 pounds of fabric, which I obviously, my, my top two here are Roy G. Bivved with Holidays. And you see, I've got two full things of red, two full things of blue. This is a Billy Book case from Ikea. Obviously, I have a lot of fabric, so maybe if I said something to the effect of I would like to fin finish 50 pounds of fabric and yarn projects or 60 pounds. I mean, with fabric, you can do that fairly quickly um, between fabric and interfacing and buttons and things like that. You know, you can get the weight up there pretty fast. Um, I did a lot of reduction on my scraps this year and I'm still working my scraps as I go. So I don't have as many of those to really think about next year, but I do want to know what you think about my cotton goal, which is maybe not, um, using up all of my cotton in 2019, but maybe trying to do a dishcloth every 10 days 
and use a substantial amount up. Um, like I said, I have been working with it the last couple weeks just because those, those hot pads are so useful. They make great gifts. They're easy to give away. Um, and I use a lot of trivets. I mean, we do enough entertaining. Um, the Christmas is specifically for our Christmas party, but, um, yeah. I, do you think that's a good thing to put in there as a crafty goal for my yarn is using that much of the cotton or focusing specifically on a fiber content yarn like that? Um, I, I'd kind of like your input on that. Uh, any other goal ideas you have to help me work through some of, I mean, I've been collecting yarn now as an adult for 10 years and I've collected a lot. Um, years prior, this has actually been one of the worst years for sales and clearances with the exception of Hobby Lobby's markdown at the beginning of the summer. Um, Hobby Lobby's finally discovered that marking things down 30 to 40% off doesn't work when you have a coupon for 40% off regularly. Um, sorry, I, I almost never have my hair this accessible so I keep touching it and playing with it again. Um, but yeah, it, it, years past I've gotten like the sheepish balls of yarn. When Joanne's put those on clearance here, they were on clearance for 89 cent a ball, which is an amazing deal. And before Yarn Inspirations took over Yarn Factory Outlet, I got like the Peyton's Bohemian for, it was like 70 cent a ball. Um, and the prices just aren't, aren't that low anymore. And I'm not seeing the deals that I saw before, but I still have, I would love to be down to the two, four by four cube storage and my two by four over here. That is my prayer shawl yarn. Um, I'd like to be down to that, which would be using an entire four by four cube unit full of yarn. Um, which is a massive undertaking. That's why I was thinking poundage is a good way to do it, but the entire top is covered. I did finally get a section cleared enough. I could put some of my scrapbooking stuff there, but I'd like to, I'd like to see a reduction in it. And I'm trying to figure out how to do that. So I would love your input on how to, and I'm not out of love with any of these yarns. So I, it's the same problem I have with a lot of things. I don't want to donate the yarn itself. I want to work it because these are things I still love. I've already gone through and done a purge of the things I don't love in the last two years. Um, as I've been sorting and organizing, I've been pulling things that I don't love or don't really like. So I, I would like your input on how to look at my stash as a, I, I want to work through this project. Um, also, it... One of the reasons why I wanted to start my channel, and I really need to sit down and do a video dedicated to why I started my channel, but one of the things I wanted to do with my channel was answering questions, and particularly product questions that you want to know. I've been knitting and crocheting for so long now. Um, yeah, a lot of my friends here laugh that I'm one of the first people to have certain things because... I'm that into it. Um, a friend of mine just got the magnet board for your pattern, uh, the pattern keeper magnet board from Knit Picks. An amazing tool. I love it. Like the moment I started doing knitted lace, it was a game changer. And in particularly when you're doing Fair Isle and you're already having to think with both parts. You, well, for me, I knit both handed when I do uh, Fair Isle like that. Um, so things like like is there a product you're seeing people receiving but not reviewing that you want to know about is there uh, comparisons for yarns is there a subscription box you're specifically interested in the quality of um i've already given my final knit crate is worth it 100 percent um darn good yarns i'm still on the fence with um i just discovered Instead of a mystery kit, Knit Picks does offer craft kits. Um, not project kits, but craft kits. Um, so I might think about doing maybe a Knit Picks next. Is there a brand you're interested in that you see people talking about? Like Hobium, where you see a lot of people getting these boxes of Hobium yarns. 
but not working with them and saying, hey, I like this. Hey, I don't like this. Hey, this is just like, um, I want your feedback. I know there are only like, it, as I'm filming this, there are only 46 of you guys that are subscribed. Um, my highest views for a video are like 50, I think. Um, so there aren't many of you out there, but I would like to know, what would you like to see? What would you like for me to talk about? Aside from my show and tells and the unboxings I'm already doing, is there something you want to know? Hey, is this worth investing? Because if I don't have that, if I don't already have it, like items under like $50, if I don't have it, I know somebody who does have it and I can borrow it. Um, I haven't gotten to the knitting machines yet. I just haven't had the time. Um, I had no idea and particularly in August, how slammed my schedule was going to be. Um, there were some major changes over the course from April to now of how much free time I have. Um, so it, it's been a, it's been an interesting year for trying to find time to do things. Um, but I do want to make this a very user friendly channel. So leave a comment up below. Feel free to email me. You can message me on Ravelry. Um, all that information is down below. Um, I'm not very versed in using Instagram, but feel free. Don't message my Facebook account, though. Um, I If we're not friends on Facebook, I'm not going to see your messages. And I don't accept Facebook, private Facebook messages or friend invites from people I don't know. Um, or haven't communicated with through like other groups and things normally. So, uh, not to be like, Oh, I don't want to be a friend, but I do share personal stuff on there. Um, information about my grandkids and, uh, you know, pictures of our house and information about where we live. And while I have no problem with you knowing I live in South Carolina, um, <laughs> I don't want you to know my house. Um, So if you, um, if you have something you would like to see me review or talk about, or, um, if there's something, say there's something on my Instagram you see, um, in pictures or on my written blog you see, I would love to know, like, if you want to know more about it in the video format, um, I think tomorrow, tomorrow is November 1st. Tomorrow, I'm going to be sharing a recipe on my written blog uh, for the Barnhart family favorite of Drunken Sweet Potatoes. Um, so I will be sharing that. That's our, uh, my family's, my, my mom's the one who discovered the recipe, but it's our family favorite sweet potato recipe. None of us have ever liked sweet potato casserole, so this is our answer to that. Um... So I will be sharing more food on the written format blog, but when it comes to crafting in particular, that's why most of y'all are here. I would love to know what you'd like to see. So uh, I'm going to quit just and go ahead and head off. Um, hold on a second. Say hi, Pippin. Say hi. Look at the camera. <gasps> Dicka Jim. He's looking at Curzon now laying in the floor. Um, so if you uh, let me know, I will not take up any more of your time. I think by the time I put this video together, it's going to be over an hour long now. Um, Baby, you're so cute. Uh, <laughs> So, uh, I hope you guys have a happy Halloween and a wonderful week. Hopefully I'll have this up by the end of the evening tonight. Um, I am going to go get ready for my trick or treaters, but, uh, leave a comment below. Let me know what you'd like to see. Let me know what you have questions about and I will see y'all soon. Bye.